the cost of living keeps you working and you never get a chance to come back. I know there are people that have been in America for decades just struggling to make ends meet. They're trying to pay their rent. You get so caught up in paying bills, you don't have time to save. And the cost of a ticket to Africa on the average is over a thousand dollars. So you get stuck there unhappy in the cold, in the winter, working hard. Most times you're in an apartment with five to six people in one bedroom. But you're not guaranteed to come back. And unfortunately, about 17 Gambians died in a Bronx fire about a month and a half ago. Their goal was to come back to the Gambia, and they did not make it. Welcome back to the YouTube channel. It's your favorite village boy, Mr. Ghana Baby, right here. And I'm back again with another video in the Gambia, and it's all about the diaspora conversation. Like I said earlier, moving to Africa now is a movement whether you like it or not. I mean, the revolution is happening. A lot of people are making Africa home again. If we take a horse and uh, from one country to another country, right? Say if it's an African horse mm. or an African elephant and you take it to a circus or a zoo in uh, somewhere in America, does the child of that elephant all of a sudden not belong to where the mother or father of that elephant came from? No, that elephant has a home too. And for me, Kenya, Africa is, was, always will be home in terms of this lifetime. It's time for you to trace back your roots. It's time for you to come back home. I mean, see, it's so peaceful in here. I don't know if you all are gonna agree with me that being in Africa is peaceful. Feel free. I like the fact that I can go, go to a club at night and don't have to walk to a metal detector. People get together, we have fun, they can drink a little or whatever, but it doesn't end in a fight, nobody gets rowdy, everyone goes home after having a good time. You can't get that in America all the time. So safety is very important for us mm. if we're single women coming here. Mm. And we have that here in the Gambia. We are safe. You mean you feel safer in Gambia than in America? Absolutely. Yes, yes. absolutely. Mm -hmm. Even to go out to run an errand, you going out to run an errand in your vehicle could lead in a police stop. A cop can stop you and be like, oh, your light is out, or, or you went through the stop sign, or you didn't stop at a yellow light. And he pulls you over, and the next thing you know, your family is hearing that you never made it home. So when I see officers here with guns, I feel safe. But if it was in the States, I'd be like, oh, let me stop, let me turn my car around, go in the opposite direction. But here, I'm like, a black man with a gun, like, I, I can live with that. I'm comfortable with that. I feel protected. Yes. Oh, police are friendly in the Gambia. Yeah, when you have one dollar, they'll be super friendly. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for spending time with me. We're gonna have a very long conversation. It's all about moving mm -hmm. to Africa. Uh, will you all agree with me that moving to Africa is not a movement? It's a movement, absolutely. Yes. What is the inspiration behind? You live in America behind and coming to Africa in the first place. Why the Gambia? Coming home. I felt called. To be honest with you, I felt called here. And for me, it's just it's coming home. It's coming back to where my ancestors wanted me to go. I fully feel that where my ancestors wanted me to come here. And so here, I get to go. Yeah. Well, what brought you to the Gambia? The first thing that brought me to the Gambia was experiencing a video of the Gambia, of dance. And this was like 30 years ago. And the dance in the Gambia was, uh, well, it was so beautiful. And as I learned more, there's such a variety of dance. The culture and the dance here is very rich. We don't get to experience it as much now, but we're working on rekindling it. 
And so the different ethnic groups have different dances that are very different. And um, that's what first inspired me. When I saw that video, yeah. And then I traveled to Senegal, and I would come over to Gambia for a couple of days. And Gambia just offered the flavors of Senegal, because it's the same people, but a little bit calmer, because it's not as many people. <laughs> You know, but um, so that's how I first wound up coming to the Gambia, and uh, I continue to come back and forth. I've been coming back and forth here for about 20 years, now. and um, I just love the culture here. I've been to Ghana too. I've been to Ghana for a couple years. Oh wow! But um, I love the culture here. I love the colors here, and then there are other things too. There's the business. There's the the lack of strenuous bureaucracy and cost, you know, of trying to start a business and handling things here is not as cumbersome as it is in other countries. The other thing that made me love coming and coming back was the colors. The colors, colors of the Gambia. The colors, not just the Gambia, but Africa. Because at least West Africa. Um, in, in, a, in the States, you get tired, of, well, I would get tired of looking at blue, black, Gray and brown. That's it. Yes. And some days I just be like, oh my God, I need some color in my life. I'm going to Africa. And back then you used to could buy a ticket two days. The next day it wasn't, you know, you could go Air Free. You could go South African Airways. You know, and then France came on and Delta and all those other airlines started getting on that money train because they realized so much money was in it traveling to Africa. But sometimes I would just go for the color. And then sometimes it's the culture because. I found it like magical. Like it's magic in Africa, America too. Mm. But some of the magic that I would experience here in the Gambia was. But you're not welcome. Here, you walk through through that door, you are welcome. But 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 if you have been welcome in here, which means that narrative is so false that Africans don't like African Americans, Africans. Is that narrative? It's, uh, it's, uh, it's propaganda. Yes, it is. It really is propaganda because it, the same narrative was applied to UK versus US. Right, that U.S. people, Black U.S., African Americans don't like people from the U.K., don't like people from the diaspora. It's not true, but that narrative works for people who try to keep us divided. Right, but if you do your research and you're interacting with people and they look like you, you don't care where they are from. I know my first day arriving in the Gambia, I will never forget it. It was my sister friend and I were together, and there were three young boys, like 11 and 12 years old, that met us on the street in Banjul. And they were like, sisters, how are you? Welcome home. They say, where are you from? Are you from the States? We're like, yeah, and one asked, and what state are you from? And the other said, never mind what state you're from. As long as you are black, welcome home. You are African. And they walked, they walked along by us and they asked, can we carry your bags? And they carried our backpacks. And then while we were walking, they asked, when you go back, can you send us some things? Can you send us some school supplies? You know? So I'll never forget that first day. And so many people I passed in the Gambia would just turn and say, hey, welcome home. Hey, sister. Hey, brother, welcome home. Yeah. That was like my first experience. You are in the Gambia right now. How long have you stayed in the Gambia? A little over a year. And can you tell us what you've been able to achieve in a year in the Gambia? Okay, during this past year, a little, a little change. I um, 
a renting place in the Taft Dell Real Estate. That's where I was renting. Top. But during that time, I purchased land and had Taft build my house. In a, in a so year? I live in my own house here. Oh, you, you never had your own house in America? I did. I sold it. You sold it? <laughs> <laughs> I used that money to build my house here because my house in America, I still had, I would have had a mortgage to continue to pay for another 20 years. That's and I'm working on building a family fun center called Intro Family Fun Center. It will be an indoor roller skating ring and a playroom and library and a cafeteria and a museum upstairs bending spots out front. Like, I'm really excited about it. It's a passionate project that I have in my heart that I want to build here. I already purchased the land. I got the business registered. I have a business bank account for it. I've only raised about the equivalent of 5,000 U.S. dollars so far. So I need to raise more money for it. But I'm excited. I want to bring, it's like bringing a piece of African-American culture to the game. An indoor roller skating rink means something to our community. <laughs> how, 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 do you, how, do you, how did you manage to raise the funds? Just with friends here and some family members. I want to help that dream come true. Oh so, uh, what we have to do right now, it's, it's going to be by force. I don't know how much you need to start. How, how much do you need to start? I mean, total, I'm going to need probably $400,000. Four hundred thousand dollars. So I think this channel can raise a hundred thousand dollars. That would be amazing. Yeah, <laughs> for you to kickstart. To kickstart. Uh, because I, I feel like you said it's a it's a passion that you've always had, and yes. being in Africa, making that passion come true, will be a beautiful thing. Thank so, you so much. I don't want to have anything to do with your money. Okay. So what I want you to do for me is to set up a GoFundMe page before I upload this video. Okay. Let me have it, and then we're gonna blow it up. Thank you so much. Is that okay? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank how, how about how about you? I mean, how long have you been here? Um, I came to the Gambia in December Just with last my son. Yeah, I came last December with my son, um, and we went to Ghana first. Hmm. We were looking for you. No, if I see water Maya, that's it. I don't need to see anybody else. I went for the premiere of coming to Africa. Africa yeah. I was the person that interviewed oh. the, the people um, there for a, one of the YouTubers. And then we went to um, uh, Accra. And I didn't like Accra as much as I like Ghana because it reminded me of New York on steroids. And then we went to Cape Coast, which was beautiful. Mm. So I thought if I lived anywhere in Ghana, it would definitely be Cape Coast because it was beautiful. We left there, and I had to go to Sierra Leone because I got my ancestry back, African ancestry. Mm. And it said 100% Mende from Sierra Leone. Wow, so nice. I had to take my son to Sierra Leone. So we went to Sierra Leone, and then Gambia was our last stop. Mm. And when I came to Gambia, I was like, this is the place because it, it, there was so much room for development and it was so spacious that I really was like, this is a place I could see myself relaxing, getting my ocean view for less than $400 a month. <laughs> so yeah. I was like, I gotta go live in Gambia because my whole thing was the ocean. Because in the States, depending on where you live, you are landlocked. So does it mean that with the 400 $400 a month, I cannot afford an ocean view in America? $400 a month is not going to get you a room in New York. I don't know what part of the state you're talking about, but in New York City, absolutely not. No, no, not at all. You, for maybe a box apartment, you'd pay about 1000 and you might have a roommate and a bathroom to share if you're lucky in New York. Yeah, literally depending on where you are. So coming here and being able to do that. Um, and my son, of course, did not come back with me, but he is coming to visit because mm. he was graduating at the time. Mm. And I just knew I had enough for the States. I was very anxious. Um, the pandemic had my chest always tight and my stomach always worried about what was happening, who I was socializing with. I would be worried if my son would go out, is he gonna come home safe? It was just not a good feeling. I come to Gambia, I can breathe. I can exhale. There is peace. There is solace. And everyone says, you look 20 years younger. You know, I'm like, 
I'm good. <laughs> but that's what Africa does to you. All of us, yeah. we glow when we yeah. come here. Yeah. And it's because of the food. It's because of the air, the ocean, and the people. The people here are so warm and welcoming. Now, let's talk about cost of living in the Gambia yeah. um, as compared to the state. Is it expensive to live in the Gambia or are things expensive in the Gambia? No, I, I think you have to budget. I definitely think you have to budget because um, of what the money is worth here. Like you have 50 Gambian Delasi to one American dollar. So the money can go through your hand quickly if you're not paying attention. But things are inexpensive. You can get a whole meal that will last you two days even for 75 Delasi. That is less than a dollar, if you will. You know, to take a taxi is 10 Delasi. To take a child trip is a hundred Delasi. So if you work in the numbers, you see that's really not a lot of money. Mm. It really isn't. You know, going out for a meal, like Zendela's restaurant is a perfect example. She keeps her prices within Gambian rates so that anybody can afford to come here and enjoy the environment. And that's how you have to think when you have a business. So I knew when I opened my business that I was gonna have to have Gambian dollars like I tell people, I have U.S. tickets on there, but you all are getting Gambian prices because I'm wanting to bring quality items to the Gambia. You know, I don't even know what I have to ask this question because I wanted to find out if you're living or surviving in the Gambia. Oh, I'm living. You're living. I'm living my best, best life. Yes, Second chapter. Hey, yeah. so which is you don't even regret coming to the Gambia? <laughs> no, not at all. Oh, really? I've never visited the continent before this That's trip. Right. That's right. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> Straight. It's my first time coming to the My first time. time. You my too. first year time. Ago. Yeah. My first yes. time to Gambia. Second time I was moving. Yeah. Yeah. Packed you, up were, you, were you not scared? I mean. Sold my house, quit my job, packed up everything. Came. <laughs> yes. And bought a house. <laughs> yes. Yes, so which means you're not going back anytime soon. I don't think so. You know, whenever I, I interview people, people will be like, oh, Maya, don't worry, they're going to come back in a year, they're going to come back in two years' time. No. I'm going to come back here in five years' time. Will I meet you here? Yes. Yes. I bought a one-way yes. ticket. You bought one-way ticket? I bought a one-way ticket. And people keep asking me if I'm coming back. I said, did I buy a round trip? No. I bought a one-way ticket. I think... Those of us that were born in Africa, grew up in Africa, when we see the diaspora returning back like this, we, we feel like something is wrong with you. <laughs> something is wrong with the states, and that's the yes. problem. They should say to themselves, if these educated, positive, high vibration people are all leaving and coming to Africa, why are they doing that? There's something wrong there. And what is wrong is you all see a superficial picture. But we know the heart of these divided snakes. You get the Hollywood version. Yeah. That's you get it. The movies, right? Yeah, you we, get we American watch, watch American movies, movies and, and we, we know that. Everything looks rosy and wonderful. Though. Yeah, America is the land of milk and honey. <laughs> we, we built that country, but we did not build it for us. That's the part that people miss. We built it for other people. I meet a lot of Gambians that say to me that they like to go to America and work and bring back a lot of money. So they don't realize that the cost of living keeps you working and you never get a chance to come back. I know there are people that have been in America for decades just struggling to make ends meet. They're trying to pay their rent. You get so caught up in paying bills. You don't have time to save. And the cost of a ticket to Africa on the average is over a thousand dollars. So you get stuck there unhappy, in the cold, in the winter, working hard. Most times you're in an apartment with five to six people in one bedroom. But you're not guaranteed to come back. And unfortunately, about 17 Gambians died in a Bronx fire about a month and a half ago. Their goal was to come back to the Gambia, and they did not make it. And that saddens me. But I'm grateful that I was given the opportunity to come here. I'm sorry. <laughs> What made it so sad was that 
I grew up in the Bronx, right? Never met an African from the Gambia. And then I found that there were people from here living where I grew up. I wish I had got a chance to know who they were. I wish I had met them. But my coming here allowed me to bring their spirit back home. So it just seemed weird to me that I'm from the Bronx and I'm here. They were from here and their spirits were expired in the Bronx. I went to the ocean and I called them home. Because that was their goal. And that's the goal of every black American. When they wrote the black national anthem, it said true to our father's land. It was true to our God, true to our father's land. The goal was always for the Africans in America to come back to Africa. having this strong desire to go to America or to Europe and the idea of making enough money to come back and buy a house or have a car or, you know this thing and the uh, first thing I can say is that propaganda is really good mm -hmm. and it works because um, as I was express expressing earlier you can hear about brothers being shot down in the street you can see the footage but you still want to go to America it's like America is this place you know and then you experience family members that don't come back they go there and they don't come back. So it must be something there. But there are things that you don't realize. Then you also feel like you've experienced family members or friends or some dude that lived down the block, you know, in Saracunda or whatever, who comes back and is able to build a house, you know, and he wouldn't have been able to do that if he was here. But um, there are a couple of things. One, when people go, like she's saying, sometimes they don't realize the struggle. When they get there, they're so tied into bills because it's eating all your money continually. So they never really have enough money mm. to come back. Mm. Because like some of my friends have expressed to me the stress for them, when they go to America, they, they experience a relief. Because the responsibility in Africa to take care of different family members and to do for so many people is continual. It doesn't just happen one time, like you can come back and do something one time. No, it's continual. So they escape that stress by staying there. They feel like they're escaping mm. it. The other thing I want to say, which is a really important point, is that when you go, even if you're able to build something for a family, even if you're able to um, come back and have a nice car for yourself and for you, you're really not, that system doesn't work for yeah. Africa because it doesn't build something that's going to sustain right. and it doesn't build something that's going to expand into mm -hmm. something more. So then you have the next person trying to go, and then you have the next generation, and your grandkids, and they're trying to get a visa and trying to go because you really haven't solved any problem. Right. And it's not African of us to do that because when you go and you're only thinking about getting a car or a nice house for yourself and for your immediate family, that's not really the way we roll. That's not the way we think as Africans. So we've adapted a different way of thinking, and it doesn't really work. And um, Somehow we have to work on adjusting that mentality and that idea and that concept because my experience is that, first of all, I never really understood it. I never really understood the depth of that push, that drive, that desire. It's like you just don't understand it, you know, until they started to take away people's visas in the States. And, and I saw two Ghanaians who lost their hands, lost their fingers and their toes trying to go across to Canada. And I'm like, nah, I just came back from Ghana. Ghana ain't that bad. So it's a real mental thing, and the propaganda is real powerful. Yes. The whole, just think, just if you just think the term, first world and third world, mm. like, we live in the third world. What's mm. the third, we're the second world. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So um, I just would like to just be able to express mm. the ideas around the concept and the, the powerfulness of the propaganda. There are a lot of um, uh, fellow brothers and sisters living in the diaspora, the Caribbean, wherever that they find themselves. For me, I think we are one, but we're just born on a different continent. They are looking forward to visit the continent for the first time. What are the things that they need to look up to? Your videos are the
the best way to start because any negative connotations, any propaganda that they may have seen, you show them, here is evidence. You do not have to have your dreams go to the West. Mm -hmm. Whatever dream you have, you can do right here. And now you have the diaspora coming to you. Yeah. Right. Find a partner. Because many of us may have the resources, but we don't necessarily have the talent. Mm -hmm. Talent is here, untapped talent. So I have people that work in my shop that want to go to the States. And I'm not gonna tell them not to go, but I do warn them, be prepared. And I will connect them with people that will guide them because they seem to think they're gonna go and not get caught on the rat wheel, not get caught up in the social life. Now, it's not like that. When you get there, you get pulled in, right? It has a way of, oh, you're making money? You know you need that car. You're making money, you know you need those red bottoms, you know you need that bag. Like, the next thing you know, you're competing you're yes, with people yes, yes. and you're in debt and you're so tied in that now you're like, you can't send money home because now you're trying to live above your means. That's what the states does to people. Like so if you come in, do your research. Put your feet on the ground and don't believe what other people have to say. So that's why I went to several different countries before I decided on Gambia. I came to Africa 26 years ago. I was in Senegal for 30 days. I took dancing and drumming. It never occurred to me that Africa was an option then. It was never presented that way. You go, you find out about your culture, and you keep, you stick to it. And that's what I did. I always represented Africa in the States, and everybody thought I was crazy. Mm. But I never knew I would live here. So I would tell people, do your research. The information is out there. We didn't have that 20 that's years right. ago. That's right. Anything you want to do, you can Google it. You can look for it in Africa. Either a native African person is doing it, or you can connect with somebody and partner with them and do what you want to do. It is all possible right here. So you have a shop? I have a shop. I didn't have a shop in the States. Do you know what I did? I was an attorney in the States. You're what? I was an attorney. I practiced law in the States. Whoa. I was an outpatient mental health therapist. I was an investigator. I worked in social services, and I had online businesses. So what I did was take my online items, and I decided to bring them here. Who knew I had enough to open a shop? Mm -hmm. That's how that oh, came yeah. about. Shop owner in Africa. I design jewelry, I design clothes, I paint. I do all of the things that brought me joy that I could not do yes. in the States because I had to worry about yes. paying bills. What I wanted to say also too is um, try to gather enough information up here because we have to start to re rethink and retrain our brain. Yes. We have been told in America that Africa is not a nice place. I saw enough commercials of babies with big bellies and flies on their faces. And when I first stepped off the plane in Addis Ababa, I said, they told us a lie. Mm -hmm. So now, with you coming out and Miss Trudy and other YouTubers showing the truth of Africa, you got to watch that over and over and over again so that it starts up here. So what I decided to do was to write books for children read by parents. My first book is called The Boda Boda Driver, A Tanzanian Experience. It's not out yet, but I'm hoping to launch it March 1st. I want to change the way children see Africa so we can get them at a very early age and tell her story and not the history that we have received. So you're gonna launch the book on March 1st? March 1st, it should be. So I'm gonna wait for you. I upload this video after 1st March. Okay. So I'm expecting the link, so check out the description box. You definitely find the link of the book and purchase it. Let's support the sister, you know? It's time for Africans to support Africans. I've always been saying that. We need to build ourselves, and the time is now. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Final message? Yes. So, um, my organization mm. and my business is Global Reconnections. And um, the main thing that we're focusing on now, mm. even though it wasn't my first priority initially, is working with deterring youth from trafficking. 
from traveling and going what they call the back way. Mm. So Gambia, I've read and heard that Gambia is got the most youth that do yeah. this right now. And going the back way meaning youth, I mean the most recent that I heard they blew up a, a, a inflatable boat yeah. and eight youth died in, in within a week's time. And the first time I heard it was 80, 80 plus youth left on a boat going out into the Atlantic and uh, within a week, within a week eight of them were dead. And um, at that same time, about three days around that time, I mean about within three or four days of that time, a boat with 140 left. So, and nobody knows where they are. I've heard that they may be in a prison in Mauritania, but other than that, people haven't heard from them. So um, my organization started working with the youth, mainly from Gunjur, but we have youth from Farato, from Bacao, from Yundum, from all over that have joined up and with Global Reconnections Back to Our Roots initiative. Whoa, nice. And our focus is to do agriculture, every aspect of agri agriculture, mm -hmm. so that we're growing our own food and eating our own food. Mm -hmm. Because in the Gambia, if you go into any shop, 90% of everything in the shop is important. Porter. And, um, excuse me, and also, the sister, what you were mentioning about the um, skating ring. So the youth that I connected with, the night I met them was, I went to a party down in Gunjur. And when I walked in, it was so much smoke and I was just, I was thrown off. And when I left out, I left talking with some of the youth saying, we got to offer you more than this. And we talked about a skating ring. Um, so with Global Reconnections, we're doing this, working with the youth, but we have, uh, we have a shop in Tipa Garage mm -hmm. doing African fashions, and um, we are doing consulting. I do consulting through the company. We do consulting. So um, what you said about people coming here mm -hmm. is but you said something about making sure that they get proper information yeah. is critical. And I heard the group, the group from UK saying the same thing. It's critical that you don't come here and be alone because some people come, they be alone, they lose thousands, tens of thousands of dollars. And that's when we find out about yeah. them, you know, and, and all, if they were connected with some of us and, and not only diasporans, it's really important that you connect with local people too. Mm. That we find ways to creatively integrate with our folk. Mm. Because there are many of our folk that really want to look out for us, that really want to do the best for us. There were people that were really upset when we had this, this thing for uh, automatic citizenship. When they had the, 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 what do you call it, the press conference. There were people calling me saying, what? You didn't call us, you didn't tell us about that. We would have been your number one advocates, you know? So it's very important that you suss out those people and look for the people that are here so that we're integrating. We're not here making ourselves an isolated community. Mm -hmm. We can still you know, put ourselves together, but still we should make it a point to integrate. Um, I, w I think I need to introduce you to TAF. Um, based on the, um, the youth empowerment that you're talking about, I don't know if you know Taf, um, yes. Taf, uh, yes. the youth man. Yeah. I will introduce him to you before I leave. Um, and I want to say that thank you all so much for spending time and sharing your experience in the Gambia with me. I really appreciate it. I believe that this video is going to do a lot. It's going to at least change 10 people's mindset about Africa. That's the reason why I do this. So I want to say that thank you and keep putting Africa on the map. Keep doing your thing. Keep living your best life in Africa, and uh, I'll be back again. Yeah, this is not the last time. I mean, the second time in the Gambia, and I'm, I'm actually trying to buy my own house along the beach. So yeah, we'll be spending time here more often. Yeah. So I want to say thank you and thank you so much for everything. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I think I've been saying thank you a lot, so I need to say thank you too for staying tuned. And uh, I will see you all in the next one. My name is still Mr. Ghana, baby, and the one and only, yeah, annoying village boy from Ghana. I'll see you all in the next one. Peace out. Thank you.